It's time to get the cucumbers into the Dutch bucket system. You'll hear us call these Beto buckets, but they're the same thing as the Dutch buckets. These are English cucumbers and they were planted three weeks ago. They're back here in the nursery and they were seeded into multi-seed oasis cubes. The cucumbers started here in the control tunnel and this is the best place to germinate seeds because it stays a constant 70 degrees in here. Mom's got more endives started out here right now. After a week or so in the control tunnel, then the cucumbers were brought back out here to the nursery and they've been here for two weeks. So now they're ready to go into the buckets. It's really good to give the cucumbers a start underneath the grow lights. These lights for this nursery and then for that nursery over there are the only grow lights we have in the greenhouse. These lights up here along the top are just used so we can see at night. Also quick, we have the tomatoes still in here, but mom likes to see a little bit thicker stem. So we're gonna do these probably next week. If you haven't seen our first Beto Bucket video, um, I'll link that for you and put it at the end screen. But we're basically setting these up the same way and using the same growing medium. So it's gonna be perlite on the bottom and then vermiculite in the middle and then more perlite on top. So these are a drain to waste too then. Yep, they're not like the tomatoes that need the vine crop. Okay. It's more, um, even though they are considered a vine crop, mine seem to do well in the lettuce for Like that? Yeah, like that. Did you put these in here? Yep, we put them in there. We're gonna do these 10 here. So I'm gonna put two cucumber plants in each one. And then I'm also gonna start some more seeds today. So I can do the other end of the line here with 10 more buckets so I have a rotating crop so I'll always have cucumbers. If you notice down here at the end of the um, beans, I have some extra spots. I think I'm gonna put the um, cauliflower and the broccoli in Beto buckets. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, because I was having problems with the um, carrots because when I water them, it always leaks on the ground. So this way it'll drain to waste. Okay, yep. nice. I sometimes do um, two crops in a betel bucket before I clean it out. So you use the same growing medium twice? Yep. That saves a lot. Yep. It does. It. It's about less time, money, you know, with the medium, time of cleaning them out. But what's going to be different with these is I'm going to put styrofoam tops on these to keep the algae out. So it keeps the meat growing medium a lot better. These are the styrofoam lids, and um, mom filled these up a little bit higher than the ones we did for the beans. That way the lids will fit nice on top. Okay, so we're doing this a little bit differently than the beans. We're gonna soak the growing medium by hand. So I'm filling up my watering can with nutrient water, because you definitely want nutrient water in there. And I'll probably go through twice and get these all really soaked down good. Because if you remember the other video, we um, put the emitters in and ran the pump to soak down the growing medium, so. When I start planting, I'll show you why the difference is. I'm going to put two in each one of these betel buckets. Gently pull apart. Gently make sure you don't strip the leaves. I always use this as a template because I always give them in the wrong spot. So just kind of dig a hole here in the medium, which is so much easier to work with when it's wet. Put the guy down in there and squish him down. And you put the cover on. Put the other cover on. For the emitters, um, usually you put them in these holes here. That's what they're for in the things. But when they're baby plants like that, I like to put them right next to it. This way they get all the water they need because their root system is so little that the water won't get to them. Got little roots coming out. What better way to spend a December cold, yucky day than planting cucumbers? I know. Can you get it so much? Yeah. 
there. Just makes you get excited for fresh stuff right in the middle of winter time. So when will the, the cucumbers be ready, you think? Another, it might be a month or so. Okay. With this low light. So mom and I both used to not really like cucumbers a lot until we tried the English cucumbers and they're still the only ones I eat are the ones that you grow. Yeah, they're, me good. Too. they're a really good crunchy snack. Just going through and making sure all the emitters are working. Yep. This emitter is not working. A lot of times the um, little thing here gets clogged up. So I just cut them out and put a new one in. With the cucumbers being a vine crop too, they climb up these strings, up the bobbins. And um, when they're about like a foot tall like that or so, they need to be trained to go up. But I'll show you this too. These are the little clips we use and they just go like this and they go around the stem and they hook onto the string. Cucumbers are done. Now we're gonna do the broccoli and cauliflower. She's grown the broccoli and cauliflower before in the grow bags, like she said, um, out in the high tunnel. So this is the first time having it in the main greenhouse and in the beta bucket system. So these are smaller cauliflower. So I'm gonna put four in each one of these. There's a space. You know, greenhouse, every inch of real estate in a greenhouse is worth money. And I'm glad I'm getting these plants in when they're little because um, when they get too big and the roots start growing together, when you rip them apart, you really stunt them. These beta buckets, since I have the cauliflower and broccoli and I kind of have the plants dispersed out, I'm not gonna put the styrofoam covers on them. And also because they are baby plants, I only have two admitters per plant and I don't wanna put any more on. I may end up hand watering these for a little while till they get bigger. So when you're putting admitters in, Make sure you don't do what I just did, crank it, because then it won't get any water. We have about 10 broccoli plants and 11 or 12 cauliflowers, and these will just be for us to have over the winter. Kind of a fun little experiment. I have to show you these beans. They've gotten so big. It won't be long until we need to start training them up the string. I have to show you these pea shoots too because they were just in the last video and I can't believe that they are already ready to go. I'm gonna take some home. Before we head out, I'll show you a couple things we got growing. This is the white bok choy again and these are the dandelion greens. Um, this stuff over here is rosy. And then a little bit farther down here is some more watercress. It's really tiny. And on this side, some more of that white bok choy. I got a really big bag of kale this time because we're gonna make some kale chips tonight. Thanks, sweetie, for all your help. Yep. We'll drive it home. Love you. Love Bye. You I want to check out the new tires on the van quick. Oh man, these are beefy. Looks like a farm van now. That'll definitely be nice for making deliveries in the snow. But um, we're heading over to pick up my oldest son from school. He was on online school for a while because of the pandemic and then they had him come back in for a couple days before winter break. But then after that, we are gonna head over to the feed mill to get grain for the steers.
Bobby just got home from work and came right out so we can get the grain done. But I've showed this before on the videos. Basically what we do is just take the gravity wagon out of the barn and hook it up to the truck and then take it down to the mill to get it filled up. have to go a mile, two miles maybe down the road, back roads. Does it look okay back there? guys so I'm gonna turn this into some kale chips so a YouTube friend sent me this recipe and I've made kale chips before and I've always put a bunch of different things on them and they've turned out okay but in this recipe it's just olive oil and salt so I'm pretty excited to see how the less is more approach turns out for these but basically what you do is wash the kale and then take the ribs out that's the stem, this part, you just throw that away. It's kind of chewy. Um, I didn't wash it, by the way. I don't wash anything from the greenhouse. We don't use sprays. We don't use pesticides or herbicides, anything like that. So also it's just me and mom that touch it, so. Now we'll just toss them with the olive oil and the salt. I'll get in there with my hands. The first time I made these, I put way too much salt on, so just a little bit is good. It says to use co coarse salt, so I had some uh, kosher salt. Okay, they feel pretty well tossed, so I'm going to transfer them over to this baking sheet I have with parchment paper. Spread them out nicely. So I have the oven preheated to 275 and they need to bake for 20 minutes, turning halfway through. So we'll get them in there and there we go. All right, they're done. It ended up taking about 25 minutes total. I did flip them more than once too, so let's taste them. Pretty good, crunchy, salty, this will definitely be a good snack because I've been eating a lot of Christmas cookies lately. I just want to say thank you guys. Um, I'm still having a lot of fun making videos and we'll be doing the tomato video soon. We got to get those guys into the beta buckets. So be sure to subscribe. I'm going to go spend some time with my family. So I hope you're all doing well and thank you for watching.